We've talked about the time value of money and NPV analysis, where we used a discount rate to compute the present value of future cash flows. We know how to use this method to compare the present value of future cash flows with a certain investment in order to decide whether it's a financially sound option. But sometimes you won't know the discount rate. Sometimes you have to calculate the rate of return or the yield on the investment. For this, we use the same set of formulas. We just solve for I over Y or R instead of the present value or the future value. The rate you earn on an investment at an NPV of zero is called the internal rate of return, or IRR for short. In other words, if you could invest $100 today and get back $10 per year forever, what would be the IRR? Well, we need to calculate the rate of return that sets the $10 per year forever to be exactly equal to the $100 cost of the investment. Using the present value of a perpetuity formula, $10, or that annual cash flow forever, divided by R is equal to $100. That's the price that we should be willing to pay for this particular perpetuity. Rearranged, $10 divided by $100 is equal to R. So the IRR is 10%. We can use the IRR to compare our company's cost of capital, or the hurdle rate, to the yield on the investment opportunity in question. Your company probably publishes a hurdle rate or a minimum acceptable rate of return to invest in a particular project. If your company's policy is 15%, then an IRR of 10% will come up short, and assuming the same level of risk, it should be rejected. That's because you would only be earning 10% on an investment when your policy requires you to earn 15%. These types of policies are easier to understand than NPV types of calculations for people who have not been trained in the time value of money. They're also very easy to communicate, so there are some things to really love about using IRR. It's useful to know that IRR is comparable with NPV. If your IRR exceeds the cost of capital, the NPV will be positive, and if it fails to exceed the required rate of return, the NPV will be negative. So why use NPV at all? Well, IRR still has a couple of serious flaws. The first is that it does not factor in the scale of the investment. Would you rather earn 20% on a dollar or 15% on $10? Well, as long as your cost of capital is less than 15%, let's say 10% in this example, both would have a positive NPV. So you might be tempted to choose the investment that yields 20%, the higher IRR. The problem with that is that earning 20% on a dollar when you could earn 10% someplace else leaves you only with a positive NPV of 10 cents calculated as the $1 times 20% what you earn on this opportunity minus $1 times the 10% cost of capital. Meanwhile, earning 15% on $10 leaves you with a positive NPV of 50 cents or $10 times 15% what you're gonna earn on that alternative investment minus $10 times 10% or the cost of capital. The lower yielding investment is far superior in terms of NPV. Sometimes blindly following IRR can lead you in the wrong direction. Another issue with IRR computation is that it can have multiple solutions depending on how the cash flows are structured. If your IRR has two values, such as 10% and 20%, but your hurdle rate is 15%, what does that mean? Well, in all seriousness, it probably means that you're going to have to do some additional analysis. But jokingly, we could say it means this would be a great time to throw IRR out the window and start using NPV analysis as our primary decision-making tool.